last time we ended up with this square character and it can move to the sides so if I press A it moves to the left and if I press D it moves to the right we used this script for the movement I'm gonna try to a little bit polish it maybe and make it a little bit cleaner it definitely can be easier written and I'm gonna split it into two parts because we currently have only one script for the character and if we started to put uh, more functionality into the script into the character movement it would be harder and harder to read as the time goes on. First we are gonna clean this if statements because uh, there are two of them and they are pretty much the same they're just uh, different in the key code. I would like to pretty much make the vector uh, deciding uh, which way to go and I think we can do that by using input get axes because uh, it will give us a value between minus 1 and 1 which is exactly what we want so let's try to make the vector by input axes okay we need to replace this magical number with the get axis code so I'm gonna pretty much copy this line duplicate it so you can see the difference and here I'm gonna put the input dot get axis it's a method and it wants a string so what kind of string can we use? Uh, we can see the axes by clicking on edit project settings and input manager there are there is like this uh, drop down menu axes and here are all of the strings that you can use we are looking for horizontal axes there are some things we can tweak for example uh, this is gonna work for left and right arrow and button A and button D which is great for us and we can probably change it even here so that's great and write horizontal here I'm gonna comment uh, all the if statements debug.log and we want to print input get axis horizontal like that uh, this is gonna tell us if it works or not so let's save it and if I press play I think there should be a uh, a lot of values starting to be printed into the console yep it prints zero because we are not using any input and if I press let's say arrow to the right you can see it's kinda changing it starts by having a small value and if I uh, press it for a longer time uh, it started to be uh, always one or minus one so I'm pressing left arrow and it's minus one and if I'm gonna press right arrow it's one we still gonna use our code but uh, we will not need to be using the if statement and this minus sign we are gonna multiply it uh, by this value but the 
movement vector is gonna be different. Our vector tells us if uh, this value is minus or plus, so the move speed can uh, stay the same. And we still need our drag. So I'm gonna copy this. Put it in front of our add force and remove both of our if statements. This is pretty much all we need. Uh, so we start it with our vector with the static value or magic value and we instead put input get axis horizontal there and this tells us if it's minus or plus. I'm gonna press right arrow and it goes to the right. I'm gonna press left arrow and it goes to the left. It's super fast because uh, we had 0.5 before and we need to tweak these numbers a little bit. I was tweaking the numbers a little bit and it works fine. It moves pretty much as uh, we would expect. Now let's see how we can split that. So we have character movement, which is currently taking care of uh, player input. I know that uh, it's just pretty much uh, one line of code, but if we want to make more possibilities for player to interact with the character like jumping maybe attacking it's gonna be more and more functionalities and we want to have it in a separate script so it's readable how do we do that we want pretty much this line of code to be somewhere else and this movement can stay here pretty much. I'm gonna create a different script. Create C-sharp script. And here we want our input get axis. So let's create variable, which is gonna be private float. Let's name it horizontal. Because remember, here the input get axis is part of the, it's pretty much the first argument for vector. And the first argument, a second num argument is numbers. So it's gonna be float. I'm gonna copy this code and in the update, we're gonna call horizontal equals input get axis horizontal so we have our numbers from minus 1 to 1 and now we want to call a method that will move so we want to call something like that But uh, we don't have the move method, method and the move method should be in our character movement. So let's create it there. Wait. Move. So now we have method move here. So let's put our moving code there. And in our method, we are gonna be expecting the float value, the horizontal axis. Let's let's name it uh, float horizontal. And instead of input get axis horizontal, we are gonna put our float value, which is given to us by calling the method like that. Also, uh, we still have our maximum speed and move speed here. Uh, we can also move it to parameters of our method. So let's put here max speed. 
Oh, also he needs to make it float. Haha, <laughs> badum. And float move speed. And those numbers are no longer needed here. So let's move them to our controller. Also, don't forget to delete those. I'm going to move them also to controller. And as you can see, you cannot call a method like this. So we need to make some more steps to make it correct because there might be a different methods in a different script. Let's say I have four scripts that has move method. And if I called it like this, it wouldn't know which move method I want. So we need to tell the program, tell the game, which move method we want from which script. So in our controller, we need to create a value that is type of character movement. Let's call it car movement. And now we can access our move method by calling our instantiated method, which uh, we didn't instantiate it yet. So let's do that first. Car movement equals get component. And it's gonna be character movement. like that. Pretty much we told our program that we created a character movement, a variable of character movement, which is called car movement. And then we told our program that our variable car movement is the character movement that is attached to our game object. Pretty much this get component gets anything that is attached to our game object of some type. So we told him that we want our character movement script. This is our script character movement that is attached to our object and we want it to put it into our variable care movement. So now we can call our move method in character movement by by writing car movement dot move and here it expects our three values, the horizontal. So let's put horizontal here. This is our horizontal axis. And the maximum speed. So let's put our max speed there. And our move speed. So now we are telling our program in each update cycle that uh, we want to calculate our horizontal axis and we are calling our move script. And the move script is called by our variable care movement, uh, which we got by getting it with get component. And uh, get component returns null if uh, there is nothing attached of this type. So if we did not have uh, our character movement attached, 
to our object, uh, it wouldn't work. So let's go to Unity Editor and attach our character input controller to our cube. Last time I <laughs> missed the cube and I put it accidentally on our main camera. So let's not do that here. And it should be working right now. So if I press play and start pressing our arrows or A and D, we are moving our character. So this is working. That's great. So let's recap what we did. In our character movement, we put horizontal get input axes into our vector. We get rid of our if statements by doing so. And also we got rid of the player input in our character movement by splitting it into two scripts. It might seem a little bit unintuitive, but in the long run, if we get more and more code, it's gonna be easier to understand the code, trust me. Anything else like jump and maybe dash or some kind of attack can be done by doing the same thing as we did here. In the next video, we're gonna discuss uh, some jumping. I'm gonna try to learn how to detect ground easily in Unity and show you the process and how I did that. That's gonna be it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!